Hi, welcome to my little demo on using watercolor crayons. I have found a new passion in my work and I thought I would never be coloring on any of my projects, but I'm hooked. I am using and showing you today, I might be saying this wrong, but Caran d'Ache watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons. They're Neocolor 2. You want to be sure to get Neocolor 2 because those are the water soluble ones. And uh, my set has, I think it's 30 uh, different colors and they're very luscious and beautiful and easily, easily blended together to make different combinations of all of these. The other materials I'm using are some textile medium, and this happens to be folk art as you can see, but any textile medium should be just fine. Um, I also have a little container of water here, and I'll show you why in a minute. I have two tiny saucers of water, and this one has the textile medium in it. I have some paper towels. Can't do anything without a paper towel around. And then I have some brushes and you can pick just about any sizes that work for you. <coughs> but stiff bristles are the best for this technique because they help to push that color around on the fabric. Speaking of fabric, oh, and I wanted to show you also that I'm using as my base here this um, parchment paper. This happens to be Walmart, but anything will be fine because it'll protect your table. And when the fabric gets wet, it soaks through to the parchment paper, sticks a little bit, but is easily pulled off when you're done with your project or it's dry whenever you want to pull that back off. No problem at all. So speaking of fabric, I have this fabric, which is happens to be uh, prepared for dyeing, but I think any fabric will work really work. You're going to want to practice and, and do a little test work to see which you like for you. I know that some fabrics that have a, an off-white print in them, or a, like a batik with a design on it, will give you some really unusual and different effects with the crayons, because the crayons cover certain things and not all. So, I also have a little mini iron here just to um, demonstrate something in just a little bit. So, let me start with my favorite color in this whole pack, which is purple. And it doesn't look purple at first. But let me demonstrate uh, coloring it lightly and then coloring it really darkly. And you can go any direction you want. Just know that when you, um, say, make a, a line like that, you might have to really brush kind of hard to get that line to soften up on your project, but it's totally, totally doable. All right, so I'm going to just pick my medium-sized brush here. Sorry, this is my light purple, this is my heavy purple. And what I'm going to do is first start with the light and the textile medium, and look how that blends. And also, it isn't bleeding. That's why I really like using textile medium. You can do blending, you can do light to dark colors, you can do all kinds of things. Now as I add a little more textile medium and go into the dark purple area, look how beautiful that is. And because I'm doing a swirl here, I think it helps to blend any fabric line or crayon lines that I might have gotten when I was putting the coloring on. Here's that beautiful line and I can go any direction over that line and I can go into the first color or first value as long as and blend it as long as it hasn't dried. Once it's dried 
uh, you can put things over it, but you're not going to be able to blend those original colors anymore. They're, they're permanent with the textile medium once they've dried. All right, let's do the same thing just for demonstration purposes with the um, same crayon and using water, which is totally fine. A lot of artists do like to use water with their uh, technique, but uh, I just happen to like the textile medium, and I'll show you why. Coloring it pretty heavily here. And dip my, I'll use a bigger brush, into my water and starting with the light and then going into the dark. It blends a lot faster with water, but it also does something else. Can you see around here what's happening? And around here, it's kind of a cool effect, but a lot of times I don't want that spread, that kind of halo around the color. So sometimes you might want to use it that way and with water and sometimes not. If you do use the water, once that has dried, you do need to put a pressing cloth over it and then hit it with a hot iron for just a few seconds and that will heat set it and you'll be, you'll be fine. It won't, um, you can't do anything else with it. The um, textile medium does not need to be heat set. All right, moving on. Sometimes when I do my pictures, and I haven't done that many to be honest with you, but sometimes when I do them, I use a pencil, and I do love these uh, black wing pencils. Oops, show it to you, that would help. It has an, a nice eraser, and the eraser is removable, and you can buy, is e the eraser is removable so you can replace it when it gets worn down or worn out. So anyway, nice, nice pencil. So what I'm going to show you here is, and there, see how the water has, or the textile medium and the color has bled through to the parchment paper, so it's really good to have that. I also try not to move my parchment paper or my fabric to a different position because it might pick up the color from the parchment paper somewhere where I don't want it. All right, I have put a, a black and white copy of a part of a picture I want to trace just for this demo. I'll work on this, I think it's a pomegranate. So putting it over the fabric like this, you can see, you can see through the fabric and so you can make a, fa a line where you want to make your pomegranate. And I would suggest a very light line, and I'll show you why in a little bit. You also could just leave that paper under there and put your color on where you want it. And I'll show you that too. Okay, so back to my kind of, well I'm going to use a kind of a red to start off with on the pomegranate. I've got this Oh, and I'm going to, this is a highlight here, so I'm going to mark that so that I remember to make it a, a different value. So here's my pomegranate, and I'm going to use red on the, the part I want the darkest. As I always do, I think of where's my light coming from, and in this case I'm going to have it coming from the upper right. And so the bottom of my pomegranate or the underside of it is going to be a little darker. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this light red in the same area. I believe actually they call it carmine. carmine. And then I'm going to put some of the purple that I love on over that. And I haven't actually practiced this, so we'll see what I get here. 
And again, I'm just kind of scribbling it on, doesn't matter about the direction, it's more a matter of how dark or how light do I want this. And as long as it's wet, remember, I can still change that. Okay, so we'll go to my medium brush with the textile medium. I'm going to start in the lightest area. And for me, that's just a little bit too red, so I'm going to add a little bit of orange while it's still wet. There we go. Now, I haven't practiced this one ahead of time, so you may find it a very strange looking pomegranate, but we're having fun. We're doing a little demo. Now I can push it right up to where those lines are that I've drawn. And if I paint over those or brush the textile medium over those lines, depending on the color and the how dense I've put on the color, you may still be able to see those lines coming through. So one thing I love to do Oh, I can't hardly talk when I'm doing this. It's so much fun. One thing I really love to do is to do a little bit of um, black stitching. Just outline some of the shapes in my fruit, in my flowers, whatever I'm making. So I can make it as, so I can make it as um, standoutish as I want, if that's a word. So I can have all these little edges that may not be perfect covered with that black stitching line. Or you could do it with a little bit of um, permanent magic marker, permanent Sharpie marker. And I'm going to blend this a little bit more right there before it dries. And I've got a little texture of the fabric coming through, and that doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to add a little brown now to this part that kind of sticks out and over here on the side. And you probably can see how we could go on forever doing this fun stuff. My advice would be to do a test before you actually do the the picture for real because you because there are so many variables I'm gonna add a little white here on this little bit of a I don't know what it is I guess it's where the stem comes out maybe and blend that in a little bit with a little bit of the white what am I gonna do with this you say well now I think it's time to just color that in and you see how the pencil still shows? So that might be a good time, a good place to do a little Sharpie marker on it or do a little bit more of the um, of your stitching on that. Okay, now moving over to this part where I haven't done any tracing, I would do the same thing, but this time, let's just do a quick bit here. This time, I don't have the lines on the paper on the fabric. So when I do this, I'll just really quickly do this. And again, I'm using the um, medium sized brush just for reference and the textile medium. I can go right up where that edge is. And it gives you a pretty crisp line. And I would imagine that the fabric you're using makes a difference on how crisp that line can be too, how rough the fabric is, how precise you can get your line. So now when I lift this off, 
I don't have that pencil line, but I have some of the color in the textile medium coming through on my pattern. So it might be something that you want to put another piece of your um, parchment paper over that and make sure you can still see through it and, um, and try it without drawing the lines first. All right. Next, I want to show you a little flower because I love doing these little flowers. Oh, and I've got, when I want to change colors, by the way, I just dip my brush into the water. And then I dry that off a bit on, the, on a paper towel. Can't do a project without paper towels. All right. So on this one, got a pattern here. I know I did lay my pattern on this wet area. I'll move it over just a little bit, but because it's just an example, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So let me go down to this this one down here. Let's see. We need to have you see this, don't we? I'm moving my water and my textile medium there. Okay. So what I want to do is this little flower right here because I think it's so cute. So I'm going to try it without uh, without the outline. So in my 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 world, this <laughs> this side of the flower would be darker, the underside. And again, the light would be coming from up in this area. And so anything on this side of the flower will be colored more solidly darker. brush might be too big for this little area. And isn't that lovely how it can be just the subtlest change there, but it, it does give some more dimension, more depth to your your shape. I'm going to put a little darker purple right on it right now and see what happens. Remember I can blend it as long as that first application is still wet. Had a little bump there so I'm going to go over that and just blend it in. Love it. Okay, for the inside of the flower, we're going to say that it's uh, lighter. So for the inside of the flower, um, we're going to use a lighter purple. Let's see what happens here. darker on the outside edges and be darker inside of this part because the light is coming from this way and it's kind of shading itself right there. I'm going to leave the middle open because I want to add a color for the center that's different. So when it's dry, I can do that and not have any problems. So I'm starting here. I shouldn't really yet because this purple here isn't quite dry, but we're going to press our luck and hope that it works. I like how you can wiggle your brush and get that coloring to pre push out and make 
make little wiggles in the edge of the flower. I'm going to do some striations toward the center. I'm not sure it's going to show up, but um, a little bit like streaks going into it. Should I push it? Should I press my luck? Should I try it? I'm going to try it. What the heck? Put a lemon yellow in there and let's see what we get. It might get brown. And as long as I'm not running into a wet edge, I might get by with it. It kind of works, doesn't it? What happened here? Good, that's still wet, so I can still kind of go over that part. Now I'll show you something that I have just completed that made me so excited about this whole process, but I can't really show you the whole thing because as my first example, first trial at this, I did um, pretty much copy another artist's work just for my own practice. So, let me show you just a tad of it. So up here, I have some of the flowers, of course, and leaves and look how beautifully you can get variations on the tones of the leaves and in the flowers and so on and honestly it wasn't popping uh, all that much until I put these black stitches around some of the shapes and what I like about that is it doesn't have to be perfect either in some places I actually goofed up a little bit here and I thought oh well that that could be some kind of a wrinkle in the leaf or something I don't know but I really like how that turned out and then of course my background is all done uh, separately I well let me say first I did I painted the flowers and the greenery and then I painted the background in after they were dry and then I did the stitching around all the pieces um, that I wanted and I didn't stitch around everything because I didn't want it all to look the same so there you are. I hope you have some fun with playing with Neo Color 2 Karen Dash crayons. You'll feel like you're in an advanced kindergarten playing with this great product. Have fun. Bye.